Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 4 got announced, that's right. The Tenkaichi series is actually going to continue, that's insane, no one saw this coming, but we have a lot more news on fighting games, and the Borto Hiatus, turns out, it's actually real, it's not a rumor anymore. All of that and a lot more on today's edition of Around the Bush. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Around the Bush. This is the Subathon edition, and we got a ton of news to go through today. Uh, starting with, obviously, the cover story on Budokai Tenkaichi 4. But while we watch this beautiful reveal trailer that is like four seconds long, we got to introduce our co host, Rene. How's it going? Yo, I'm, I'm glad that uh, intro went well, you know? Yeah, it's that slightly was... desync. Slightly. I can see the desync, but. Uh, but uh... But we can make it better. We can make it. Did better. you make the new audio as well? Because no. there's a new audio. There's a new audio. Yes, there. Is. I oh, made a new audio. Shit. Okay. No. So maybe. It's fine. Maybe if I do it, it, if I do the new audio, it will be synced up. Maybe. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Okay. It should be. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's talk uh, anime news. Uh, big w dude. The last two weeks for anime games have been strong. Uh, we've been complaining about you know we're trying to maintain an anime games channel. There's not a lot going on. Well, it turns out. There's a lot going on now. Yeah, all of a sudden there's a ton uh, going on for sure. So this happened during the... Uh, can we get rid of end screen stuff? No? Okay. Uh, this happened during the uh, Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour. This trailer is not available on the Bandai Namco channel. It's, uh, it's been re-uploaded by a bunch of people. The only place where it is available is during the Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour VOD. They didn't even upload this separately, not yet at least, and I don't know when they'll do it, if they'll do it at all. So it's kind of like a, an announcement that dropped out of nowhere and took the world by storm. Budokai Tenkaichi was trending for like three days straight. It, it was absolutely Crazy. insane. The power of this franchise is unlike, unlike any uh, in the world of anime games. Like, not even... You, you think, like, Storm is the king of anime games based on, like, recent events? Not even close. Not even close. This thing comes out and, and like, it gets announced and you see people that have nothing to do with anime games tweeting about this. Because this was their childhood. And, uh, and yeah, it was a lot of people's childhood. Budokai Tenkaichi yeah. is a legendary series. Even, even like, uh, you know, websites and... and channels that don't usually cover anime games uh popped off with this one because yeah as you said this is uh for a lot of people uh, a childhood game and a lot of people play this as a kid and it just brings a, a lot of memories back are they any good but you know that's kind of questionable in today's standards uh but like it's definitely part of a lot of people's childhood and and that's that's really important one thing i will say though is I don't think I've ever seen and and obviously Dragon Ball Fighters was a game that was very um, hyped to us in specific because we already love fighting games and then we also love Dragon Ball and we cover anime games so that was like uh, that was a big moment for us right but I don't think I've seen people pop off this much for any game since I've worked uh, in 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 the anime games industry. To be honest, I think this was the most because because he went away like he went outside of the anime games realm. It's just people just yeah, popping off everywhere. Outside of anime games, outside of F the FGC too. I mean, the entire FGC popped off for fighters, which you could say like a lot of the FGC is outside the anime games realm. But mm -hmm. but this w just went mainstream right away. Yeah, like yeah. this is this game already sell sold millions right right now. You put this out, you don't promote it anymore. It already sold millions. It doesn't matter yeah. what kind of it is, what game it is. It doesn't matter what else they show. This game is already selling like crazy. Um, now they have to make it a good game because, like, mainstream appeal has is a it's a double-edged sword, right? So you're gonna make a lot of money uh, for sure, which means you can invest hard on your game and, and feel safe about it. On the other hand, you put out a bad product, it kills your brand. Like it straight up ruins Tenkaichi for everyone. And like, if Ultimate Tenkaichi didn't do it. This definitely will. With the amount of appeal it's getting right now, they have to pull this off, man. Yeah, yeah. And 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 as we've been speaking about this, like, we still don't know what it is yet. They don't specifically come out and say this is Tenkaichi 4, which I think is a bit concerning. I'm going to be honest, because... I wouldn't call it Tenkaichi 4 at this point. Like, yeah. A new Tenkaichi, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's what I would call it. Like, a, just... What worries me about something. it 
is that it could be a Raging Blast, it could be uh, Ultimate Tenkaichi, it could be something that uh, is not necessarily one of the main... We, we know they, they are, we know they are the follow-ups to Tenkaichi, uh, but I don't think it carries the same weight if you don't call it 4. Uh, I think marketing-wise, calling it 4 is the best way to go about it, but it also depends on what they do. And them not saying specifically that it is 4, I think, first of all, a bit concerning. All right. uh, second, we just got a 4 second teaser. Uh, looks amazing. Uh, if this was the looks that the game had, my god, I would be so hyped. I, I don't think it will be. I think marketing-wise... Uh, they, I don't think they can call it Tenkaichi 4. I mean, you you expect Tenkaichi 4 to be a sequel to the PS2 games, and you, you want to sell something that's bigger than that. I think a name like Ultimate Tenkaichi is much stronger if the Ultimate Tenkaichi wasn't already ruined, you know? But a name in that vein of, like, change a word, uh, but call it the new Budokai Tenkaichi. Uh, so you could go Budokai Tenkaichi Sparking and sort of bring together the Japanese name and the English name because it's called Sparking in Japan. Uh, so something like that, I think, would will be their move uh, going forward. Uh, but you're right; they didn't show, they didn't, they don't say specifically what it is. I do think that on the official website, they specifically talk about the trilogy of the Budokai Tenkaichi games, and this this, this is a follow up to that. So they don't they don't talk about Ultimate Tenkaichi, they don't talk about Raging Blast. They talk specifically about that trilogy and saying yeah. we're gonna pick that up. You know, so this is not. I think we can conclude from that that this is not an Ultimate Tenkaichi 2. I, I don't think that's what's happening here. Uh, that said, not showing who's the developer behind this. That's a major red flag. Like, not even that? What are we doing? Tenkaichi Connections, for instance. Great title. But, like, who's, who's making this? The, another thing that concerns me, and, and you guys know me at this point. If you don't, uh, I'll explain. <laughs> I am a guy that usually is very hyped for everything. Uh, I don't usually get disappointed. If it if it if it tanks, it tanks. Uh, I'm I'm sad about the team. I'm sad about the people that are disappointed. But I, I don't usually get sad about video games. I like to get hyped though. I do like to get excited for stuff. And for me, not to. There's a part of me who is very excited for this, but there's a part of me who's very cautious. Even uh, again, even if I am usually the type to get excited about everything. So we've talked about the, the, the situation where the naming and the branding, I think, is a bit weird. Obviously, this is very early in development, uh, so uh, you never know. But not saying who the developer, who the developer he is, there are two things here. Either the game is like five or six years uh, down the line, yeah. which I don't think so. Which I honestly don't think so, because it's not really Bandai's move to announce a game that early. Yeah. Uh, but this the does thing... seem like an announcement that is outside of their normal. Like dropping this announcement out of nowhere in the middle of an event and like kind of not even posting about it on, on their YouTube and their socials. It kind of feels like... It feels like it's Bandai's biggest announcement in years. And at mm, the same time, yeah. it's an announcement they're pretending like it didn't happen. I got a yeah. newsletter like yesterday. And they're like, yo, check out all the Bandai anime game news. And they were like, Storm Connections trailer, here's the LC for this, here's that. They don't mention Tenkaichi 4. Which was yeah. the biggest thing that Bandai did in the in the last, I don't know, year or so. I mean, the, the biggest thing they did before this was Elden Ring. In terms of announcements. Yeah, I, don't, I, yeah, and I, I don't think anything else has come close. Yeah, even... even uh, I see a company in chat. Uh, didn't they do a very small teaser with Kakarot 2? Yeah, they started small, but but even then they showed much more, and I I believe they they said like uh, it was a Dragon Ball project or something. Uh, oh, I think that's, that 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 was or Project yeah, Kakarot sure. or something like that. Uh, but yeah, they they started small, but for this one, but but at that point we knew it was CC2 at, at least. For this one, we don't even know what the company. Uh, like, what is the company making this game? Is there even a company yet? I don't, again, I don't see Bandai There's announcing gotta a game. Be. I mean, at the end of this trailer, they do say that this is uh, in development footage. So, like, this is supposed to be, they're targeting the final look of the game already. So, like, under development by who? This is oh, footage this under footage development. footage is under development. Yeah. So, by who at this point, you know? <sighs> yeah, yeah, man, I don't know. You know, I, I was thinking about the, that discussion, discussion the other day. I do think... And this is very unlikely, and, and honestly, I don't see it happening mo mostly because Kakarot is still going and they're still updating the game. Project but Z. I would, but <laughs> Project I would definitely, 
I would definitely give the CC2 a try for this one. I CC2 has been showing a lot of good stuff. I would give them a go at this and and just but let them. CC2 but, is making Storm and it's making Dragon Ball yeah, and Kakarot already. Too like, much stuff. So making two Dragon Ball games? I don't think that would be them. Which 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 you know who is making this game? Is it Spike? Do we really want that? Is there any any I, I other mean, company? If it's Spike, you gotta give them props for leveling up the the look that much, because like Spike has never made anything close to that. Spike was never like on the forefront uh, in graphics and in animation. They did Raging Blast, right? Uh, yeah. Raging Blast looked pretty good at the time. At least I don't think it looked no. as good as Burst Limits. And Burst Limit no, came out definitely before not. that. Definitely Burst Limit yeah, came but, out before, you know? So but, like, but no, but Burst Limit was a much more contained game. It's like comparing Xenoverse to Dragon Ball Fighters. Like, it's, okay. it's sort of two different art styles. I think the Raging Blast... Dude, this uh, is not small. <laughs> this fucking reveal is not small. Yeah, this is, this is pretty big. Yeah, this is pretty big. This is not small. I will say this. I think uh, Raging Blast, at least the character models, I remember specifically thinking, the character models looked great. I don't. I'm. Um, I can't say for sure about the scenery and all the stages, but I do remember like the the characters. Um, back on Xbox 360, I remember thinking, "Well, the, these characters look pretty dope." Yeah. And this was after I played uh, Burst Limit. Burst right. Limit looked great. Burst Limit was one of my favorite games uh, back then. I don't know how, how well it holds up, to be honest, but right. at least back then it was. But still, Raging Blast had that impact. So I don't think they're necessarily ter terrible in that regard it's just that we've been screwed by <laughs> spike <laughs> spikes anime games for a while uh and uh we don't we don't really believe in them but um no hey. i mean they, they were i mean they were super influential right you, you and the reason why spike is one of the big anime game developers is because of tenkaichi yeah without tenkaichi there is no jump force there is no like trashy arena fighters that are all cash grabs but there's also no storm there's yeah. also like the arena fighter genre doesn't exist without tenkaichi so mm -hmm. it, it has influenced the good and the bad uh to the point that they kept getting games for ages no matter how good or bad they were yeah uh, and they kept i mean jump force sold like 10 million so their games sell you know they know yeah. how to make games for cheap and uh with with a lot of character hype and and it always goes to is is that Jesus Christ, jump sizzle bun? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my God, another five gifted. Thanks for that, man. Let's go, let's go. Uh, you know, uh, Jump Force was. Uh, people acknowledge Jump Force as a bad game, and thank God they do. Uh, it still sold a lot. I personally know friend friends of mine that bought the game and sold the game because of, of how bad it was. These are people that are not usually like hardcore gamers or or anything like that. They get hyped by the stuff, they, they, they like anime, they buy the games. I've never seen people return a video game. I've seen, I, I've had people like, okay, this game is cool. Like, it was a cool purchase, but I don't care for it much. To go out of their way and return the game, Jump Force yeah. was the one, and I have three no one, not two, three examples of people that return Jump Force. Crazy, right? Uh, and, and that's the thing. I know the game sold pretty well, right. but I do think that it was a bit of a hit on Spike. I hope it, it is, and I hope it shows that, like... It, I, I think the hit was One Punch Man. One Punch Man was the hit, because Jump Force sells yeah. like crazy. Spike get the One Punch Man uh, game development. And, like, this is what's the most unfair thing about video games ever, is that... The good game or the bad game is never rewarded with sales. It's always the sequel that gets hit. So, like, the first Legacy of Goku game, for instance. Garbage. Like, people got burned on that. The second Legacy of Goku game is one of the best Dragon Ball Z games of all time. It tanked in sales. Because yeah. people felt burned by the first game, you know? And I think the same is happening here. People felt burned by Jump Force. They didn't buy One Punch Man. But One Punch Man is seen as a failure. Jump Force is not, you know? Yeah. And honestly, honestly... I find that One Punch Man has a lot more cool stuff going for it. Personally, I don't... Both games are not very good, but like, I, I don't know. At, at least it has some of the fan service, some jokes, some stuff. Well, the character creation is fantastic. And, and Jump Force just... 
in my opinion, has nothing going for it. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's exactly as you said, uh, kind of burnt. And but to be honest, I feel sorry. I, I feel sorry for for whoever is involved. But at the end of the day, if you make a bad product and you hinge a lot on the, the marketing side of it, you, you gotta fail, man. At some point, you gotta fail because you need to do. You you, you can't. Uh, if you want to sell a game, if you want to make people spend a lot of money on your game, it needs to be good. Yeah. Uh, and and if you're using the marketing uh, to go around that, uh, I, I get it. It's your job, but I don't I don't necessarily respect that. So so yeah, at some point you gotta fail. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully those two games uh, are you know a good example for them. And maybe if they pick up Tenkaichi Four, they they'll do a better job. Maybe. Yep, hopefully. Uh, but that's Tenkaichi 4. I think we uh, won't hear about this game for a while now. Uh, because it seems very early. Uh, there's a lot of people comparing this to Connections because both games were announced sort of at the same time. But I really don't think the two games are competing at all. Because Connections is coming out this year. And this game is not coming out soon. So we will buy Connections, we will play Connections, we'll get sick of Connections. And we'll still be waiting for Tenkaichi 4 to, to come out. So these two games, even though they got announced roughly at the same time. And, and that's why there's a lot of comparisons going on right now. Uh, I don't think they live in the same space. They are not competing with each other. Yeah. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. It's, it's uh, this game. This game. I want, obviously, we don't know much, but I think this game is at least uh, one, one and a half, two years from now. I, I don't see this game coming before that. Uh, well, I, I hope it does. I hope it's good, but <laughs> I don't think it it will. Well, we'll find out. I don't think it has. I it could be good, man. I don't know. I have hopes. I just I don't think it will live up to people's expectations because that is like. They're expecting way too much. They made a poll. Kinda People crazy. are expecting like 200 plus characters. Like, oh, kind of crazy. Oh boy. All right. So anyway, <clears throat> moving on. This was during the Dragon Ball games uh, battle hour, um, which I was going to transition into this. But first, we have a new visual for uh, Kakarot DLC. Uh, that is the chaos at the World Tournament. That's the name of the DLC uh, confirmed. Uh, so it's uh, the the first original Dragon Ball DLC coming out for Kakarot. Uh, still no dates, but there is the key visual right there. Just wanted to share that with you uh, because it has uh, a free Goku feat. It's, it's for free. Yeah. For free. Very yeah. cool. The subathon is going to start feet. in 40 minutes. True. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been talking about Kakarot. We're excited. We're very excited for, for that DLC. We're very excited to see how the, the whole uh, tournament fighting is going to go. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, just bring it. We're ready. We're so ready. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters rollback will have a beta test later in the spring. Uh, so they finally gave us a window for the beta test. Uh, I was expecting a concrete date to come out of this, but they said, ah, spring. Spring beta on, on, on Steam. So that is around the release of Street Fighter for the beta of rollback. This is... The, this keeps being disappointing yeah uh, dragon ball fighters just keeps being disappointed and and honestly yeah it's very good that we're gonna get a patch hopefully they'll this game when it dies it will die without lab god being such a stupid fucking character in the game uh and obviously like i want fusions to be gone as well because they're a nuisance but lab code is just uh it's just too much um i do think that they they started they probably started this way too late and that's why, you know, development takes a while and, and, and we're going to get this so late because they realized that they need a rollback way too late into the game. And again, they're probably experimenting with it for the next iteration of the game uh, of the franchise. But uh, it's just like you really want to push this. And I know you want to make things right, but you really want to push this to Street Fighter 6 date. That's not very smart, man. And it's it has been announced. And then they made another announcement about it being announced. That was weird. Mm -hmm. And now they announced that they don't have a date, but at least we have a, a beta test coming. Okay, we have a date for that rollback test? No, we don't. Come on, man. Yeah, at this point, we needed a date for, for the beta, at the very least. Uh, it, it was kind of disappointing for sure. But at least it came with the info that, hey, we are not done patching this game. So another balance patch is coming. Uh, and I think, like, so many people are sick of this meta that they were ready to give up on rollback, if that was a chance. Like, if they could, they would swap the rollback for a balance patch, because they're so sick of this. But, uh, hey, turns out you don't have to choose, you can get both. 
Uh, and I think that's because of Evo. Uh, Hiroki has mentioned that because we made it to Evo main game again. Uh, we we want to polish the game once more, so we're going to release another balance uh, update. And, and thank God, man. And yeah. thank God. I it was it was frustrating to watch the world tour. I think. Uh, again, like lab code is just full of stuff that shouldn't be in a in a balanced fighting game. It just annoys me. Seeing someone you root for get destroyed by random shit from that character is just annoying. And I know they should have picked that character, but uh, Wade, for example, uh, and, and he, he does play lab code. Uh, I think it was uh, Wade. I think it was yeah Shanks as well. Hmm. Every time they got hit by random shit. Because the thing is, when you're playing a, a top tier team, like for example Fenrich, the amount of mistakes you are allowed is so much higher than a team like Wade. And don't get me wrong, Wade is playing Hit, uh, Janemba, and Lab Code, which is a really strong team. Yeah. But still, the amount of mistakes you're allowed to make when you have that team, it's just annoying. It was annoying to me because I was so much rooting for Wade. Nothing against Fenrich, I think Fenrich is amazing and, and he totally deserves it. He's been grinding the game like hell. But it's, it is frustrating, man. And so many lab codes. You have a tournament <laughs> where 100% of the... Barring Shanks. Shanks was not using her. But like everyone else. Lab code on the team. Yeah. Are we still arguing? Yeah, There's yeah. still people playing like... Saying, ah, she's not as strong as... Like, she's strong, but these are also a problem. But come on, man. Everyone was using that character. True. You have to use that character. You do. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's how the, the tour ended. Fanrich won. And... Three Japanese in a row, huh? Kazunoko, Goichi, Fenrich. Wait. Yep. No. Ah. No. Ah. Uh, Wawa won, yeah. right? He won, Weave, he, he won Evo and... Ah, that was the online thing. <laughs> was it the... No. It had it... an offline finals, but I think it was online qualified or invitational. What was it? Dragon yeah, Ball th Fighters World Tour winners. Yeah, there was a uh, the qualifiers were offline, uh, online, but then the finals were were. Uh, yeah, I were remember online. the finals offline. Yeah, 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 but this was sort of like the same too, because you had a, vol a lot of online yeah, qualifiers right. for this one too. Wow, wow, one. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, over nitro. Yeah, yeah, I remember that perfectly. Yeah, because he, because I remember like e e e won both. Still, man, what the hell. <laughs> yeah. Defend too strong. We need Wawa. We need Wawa back. Wade. Wade was so fucking close. Man, I close. felt for him. Uh, uh, that was... That was close. 3-0 win over Fenrich. I mean, Fenrich did send him to losers with a 3-0 as well. Anyway, yeah. in other fighting game news, hey, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus has the first character announced, Anila, and we got a, a gameplay trailer that also shows some of the new systems that are coming out in Rising. Uh, so, like, the auto combos follow-ups into, like, overheads and lows, the sprints, uh, the, the dash attacks, I mean, this, whatever this counter is that they haven't announced yet, the counter hits that looks like, um, I want another song, the counter hit that looks like a Guilty Gear Strife slow down type of thing, but yeah, um, I'm gonna send you a song. She has sheep, and she has, like, a move that reminds me of Mace Totsugeki, uh, so she's gonna be fun to deal with. I'm gonna send you a song. <laughs> I'm gonna send you a song that is, uh, I think, very suitable for this character. Okay. And I, I, I started listening to the song in my head, and I started laughing. So sorry about that. Okay, okay, no problem. I think, I think you're gonna enjoy this. This, this is by, by the way, this is not safe. Send it this over. This is not safe. Wait, I can't play it. I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, I can't play it. I can't play that. Come on. And no one's gonna get the joke. <laughs> no one's gonna get the joke. No, That's, this I'm is sorry. just for you. <laughs> this is amazing. Anyway, she's a thing. Uh, developer backyard. If anyone knows what this developer backyard says uh, further down, uh, what I know it says for sure is that hey, the next DLC character, we were planning to put him out in March. Uh, it's been delayed to April, early April. So, early April is Evil Japan, so this character might come out right after Evil Japan. They might show it in Evil Japan and then put it out. Uh, also, the game is now on Xbox. Congratulations, Game Pass, available with crossplay and everything. Uh, anything else on this uh, backyard, uh, Ender Up, Ashura? Uh, I can actually include something as well. Um, they did say 
that even though uh, the next character is coming in April, uh, people are going to get a small hands-on in EVO Japan. Oh, cool. So they're probably going to oh. announce the character and then people are going to play them. Nice. Evo. Also, we already know who the character is. I feel like yeah, people forget much, that they but... immediately showed it after Sin, but I mean... Wait, who is it? The uh, bed woman. God damn it. Oh, yep. boy. Why? Why? Why are we doing that? Anyway, Guilty Gear, still going strong. Available now on Xbox and Windows Store. Uh, on Game Pass. Fucking free with crossplay. What yeah. is this fighting game, man? Already installed. Um, just, uh, when I finish Hogwarts, that's gonna do a quick, quick uh, uh, achievement run. Quick 1,000 gamer score. Yeah. True, true, true. Uh, but there you go. There you have it. And finally, in fighting game news, to close it out, we have the Paul gameplay trailer, which I have not seen yet. So I'm going to watch this together with you guys with sound and everything. It's so good. It is brand new for me. Paul is that guy that punches really hard. And the impact in this game has been pretty good. He's such a monkey in this game. My God. Whoa, he's old. He's old. He's old, but he wants to remain young with that air style. I okay. okay, first of all. Does he travel to every stage with a fucking brick wall just so he can smash it on yes, his intro? Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, he's casually handily uh, supplying the brick industry. God, <laughs> yep, man. that's his thing. He breaks the wall. Yeah, you know, I respect that. I respect that. Yes. Has to break hmm. the wall and has to take the the bike into, into, into work. This game looks good, man. Oof. Oof. Armor? That's a lot of it. That was three hits of armor. Holy crap. Oof. Oof. Dick punch. Oh my god, the sound effects. Yeah. There's the new uh, dash thing. Oh god. Oof. She. Oof. Looked like a stun thing, right? But it wasn't. I love this. It sounded like it. Man, look at those uh, drive rushes. <laughs> it's just, it, it's it's the the thing about this this game is like, and I think this is very imp ooh nice. Uh, it's just oh, the like, one punch man. <laughs> one punch. When when you're playing this these types of games, you want to feel that that power when you're punching when you're kicking, and yeah. this this definitely feels like it. Also, shout out to the the clothes changing when when he rips the. Oh, this like he actually the, the keep jacket. It? Oh, yeah. I think so. I think so. I think he. Yeah. yeah, yeah he Holy crap! That's good. Good details. He also fixed his rage out because originally, uh, when he said the ooze, it, it was after the punch, but now the, it's now before, so it's so much better. Good job. Good job indeed. That wraps it up for uh, the fighting game news. Moving on to anime game news. Uh, release date has been announced for Sword Art Online uh, Recollection, I believe is the name. Uh, yes, last recollection. Confirmed for October 6th. And they put out a trailer that was like nothing but anime shots. They had zero gameplay. And that trailer has been removed. Great job. What is going on? This trailer is still available on Facebook and everything, but... I When I clicked I this trailer, it was unlisted. And now it's Damn. been removed. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I got. I was the one getting these news. It was a. Um, I think it was Twitter. Uh, Nobel, the 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 new guy for news. Uh, right. Nobel, I think. Uh, put it put this one out, and as soon as I clicked the video, I saw he was in list, and I'm like, right, this is kind of weird. Yeah. But that maybe they sent this to several outlets, saying like sort of like the 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 marketing package, and they sent this to people. Uh, it was definitely unlisted is a weird thing. The video is unavailable? Yeah. I didn't know this one. This is weird. You deleted it. Wow. Super Crazy. Super weird. Don't know what's going on. But yeah, it's the first time we got a release date, which is October 6th. Um, so this year, I think they had announced this year already. October 6th is a bit more specific, though. We, I don't think we had that before. But now it's kind of up in the air. I don't know if it's actually confirmed or not because they kind of deleted it. Uh, yeah. uh, this is one of those games that's going to show up at Gamescom. Um, and it's going to like take space in that Bandai Namco roster. For sure, for sure, yeah. And that's not cool, because <laughs> it takes uh, space of other games. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll we'll see how the Gamescom situation is. You know what? I'm not excited with, with, for this at all. Crazy. With 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 Storm with Storm, I don't think Dragon Ball is gonna be there because uh, again, it's 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 uh, it's What's gonna be Ball? a while. Oh, the guys, uh, no, so, yeah. no, not even not, not a shot. Uh, so, a but shot. with with connections, my hero though. When mm, the maybe. fuck is my hero, man? What the hell? Who's my hero? Where I'm very excited for that. God damn it. It's taking so long. Hey, what's up with this game, though? In Zoom 11, Victory Road, we got a teaser trailer. They announced the um, worldwide release window of 2023. Uh, and that's it. But uh, every, I, I don't know anything else that happens in this trailer. There's, uh, there's stuff that they're showing that has been confirmed. Like, there's the adventure portion of it. There's the football portion of it. I think announcing... A global 2023 release date is the first time. Uh, but they had already said 2023 is when this game's coming out. So globally, I think this is the first time they're confirming it. But yeah. nothing more specifically though. Yeah, we have like a few uh few bits of the adventure mode. I think we have like sort of a, a practice mode for, for the soccer portion. Um soccer. Football. Soccer. Yeah. Gonna... Oh my god. <laughs> really? Yeah, there you go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, he should tell. He missed. <laughs> oh, there's an invincible. Wall. Yeah, I missed. I'm sorry. I'll leave. I'll just leave. Uh, yeah. I, I again. I want to know what this game is all about. Well, I, I'm. I want to review this game. Maybe if we get. Uh, if we get the the chance. Uh, and see what it is all about. I don't. I'm. I don't think this game will be uh, that good. Yeah, it so it's going to be like for it. a very specific type of, uh, of player, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it turns I out. Just, I just want the studio to be free to make other video games, man. Level 5 yeah. has been making this for ages. We just finish it, put it out so you can be free of this nightmare. That you yeah, we'll started, see. Maybe. started so many times. This is <laughs> real. Yeah, maybe the gameplay loop is fun. You have like all these menus. Maybe. And they, maybe, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, One Punch Man has made it to Overwatch in the first, I, what I call the first of many collaborations for Overwatch. This feels like a first step. This feels like they are going to keep going with this. Um, and it's a great first step too. I don't think every skin is a win. Uh, they put four skins in. Saitama for Doomfist, Moomin Rider for Soldier 76. Those two are big Ws. I think Tatsumaki for Kiriko looks good, but doesn't come with a lot of extras. Uh, so feels a bit rushed. Uh, Genji, uh, Gen Genos is, uh, bad. It's a bad skin. I, I would not yeah. wear that if it, if it was free. Uh, and you have to pay for it, so. That's, uh, that's the L of the collaboration. And also it comes with zero bonuses. doesn't come with anything. Uh, so yeah, not every skin was treated the same. But I think most of them are really good. And, uh, it got people that don't play Overwatch to play Overwatch, like me. And I uh, got a lot of people talking about this collaboration, too. So I do think, like, this is the most positive I've ever seen people talk about Overwatch, ever. Because the narrative of Overwatch 2 was always, like, clouded in that Blizzard situation, you know? Uh, yeah. And this is the first time that I've seen people talk about Overwatch without even mentioning it. For a while. Uh, yeah, this was a, this was a very interesting integration. Oh, like, shit, the I'm doing a subathon. Oh, look at that. It's <laughs> happening. Uh, we're in the future. Uh, yeah, I think I think um, Overwatch could could use can use wins like this. Uh, I, I will say this: uh, I've had some discussions about the pricing of skins, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a big fan of of how gaming works nowadays in terms of monetization. I'm not a big fan of battle passes. I'm not a big fan of skins and how they monetize that. Uh, but if the game is free, yeah, and if the game does not uh require me to spend money if it's just a matter of supporting the game that i've been playing i i really don't mind it and i do think the skins are a bit expensive i i think this would be a perfect integration if every character adds sort of like a, a highlight intro and and every character have a specific thing it, if it everyone be just got Doomfist. the Doomfist, uh, treatment yeah yeah for sure but then you also have Moomin Rider, which is free. Yeah. Right? And, and that is very and not cool. not hard to unlock uh, either. And like they gave Moomin Rider the same treatment as they gave Saitama. My highlight intro, victory pose. Uh, they, they gave him all the stuff. So, yeah. And, and they could have easily said, uh, you, you guys can have Genos for free, you know? Like that's the one thing. But no, they gave you the skin that they actually put a lot of work into. And that's cool. 
I that's think really that's cool. cool. I think Kiriko, Kiriko and, and, and Genji skins might be a, a bit of a waste of money, in my opinion. Even though the Doomfist, the Saitama skin is m more expensive, I think that's a much better skin. But in uh, my opinion, Genji is the one that is a waste of money because, and, and this is obviously Kiriko personal. at the end of the day looks good, but it, yeah, it just doesn't come with a lot of stuff around it. Yeah, know? yeah. Uh, the the Genji one is the one that I think. But again, this is this is obviously personal taste. But yeah. for me, it doesn't look good. Uh, like uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to rock that that skin for Doomfist and Kiriko. Yeah, I like those skins. It's, it's not a new issue cool. either. Like I think just Genji every time he has his face. Uh, available it, it doesn't look great. yeah it's a bit weird um but yeah i think overall good integration i love what they did with the intro with the trailer i love what they did with the menu the whole animation i i even the event i had a lot of fun playing obviously i i i like this game quite a lot uh so so i am a bit biased in that regard mm -hmm. but it was fun everyone just grinding globco coming back to overwatch uh and and it brings the, first, the question the first time i played overwatch too <laughs> Oh yeah, and and the and it's been like what five years since you've played oh, yeah. Overwatch. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, and you know it was it was fine. It was it was it was super fun. It, it, uh, it was way better than I remember. I'll tell you that. Like as soon as I picked it up, I was like, oh, I thought Gundam was close to this, but nah, <laughs> this is still yeah. way better. It's, it's still way better. And I again, I it's think a Gundam free game. does its own like twist on things, but like oh, there's so much stuff that just works on Overwatch. Yeah, yeah, and and again, they're still figuring out the whole battle pass situation. I think they're getting better. Uh, it's not my favorite type of monetization. I would rather just buy a, a full game, but uh, that's not how people go about it nowadays. I do get mad when there's there was this Capcom showcase yesterday, and they showed Exo Primal. The game looks bad anyway, but like <sighs> battle pass on top of a paid game, bro. The reason why Battle Pass is successful is not because of the Battle Pass, it's because the game is good. I'm, I get so mad at this. Like, you're charging for a game and then on top of it you go for Battle Pass and the game doesn't even look good. It's just, it, it, Overwatch, at least it's the, the one thing like Overwatch and Fortnite, at least the games are free, you can play them for free. If you want to support, by all means, but they're not requiring you to buy this. A bit expensive, but uh, I yeah. do, this, this, this gives me hopes of more collaborations more i see dragon ball i see naruto appearing i see my hero and that's very exciting yeah and i i would like to say i don't know i guess i guess this is like new territory for anime games uh the exclusivity stuff uh how that works uh, i actually do not know when it comes to these uh collaborations because bandai namco is the only publisher that can publish dragon ball games uh, the only publisher that can publish Naruto games for as long as they hold that license. Mobile can work. It's sort of a separate field. I don't think it does on like big licenses like uh, Dragon Ball and Naruto. But for my hero, it could be like a separate license for sure. Mm. Um, these collaborations, though, I have some sources tell me that Bandai didn't even know Naruto was collabing with Fortnite. Like that deal was made without even consulting Bandai Namco. So. I don't know if Epic has some sort of exclusivity on that type of uh, collaboration with Dragon Ball or Naruto, but because this is like so recent here, there might not be any kind of exclusivity in place and Overwatch could just do Dragon Ball next, you know, even though be Fortnite cool. already did it. That'll be cool. I think, I think Dragon Ball actually, and, and this, is, this is something that I haven't thought about too much, but honestly, if we think about it, we'll probably come up with stuff. Uh, I think, I think Naruto, my hero, would work pretty well. Uh, and, and honestly, just the, the treatment that they gave uh, One Punch Man, I think it was tre treated with a lot of respect for the IP. Uh, you know, you, people that were involved involved are definitely fans, and I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm honestly excited for for this. Hopefully this is not a one thing, a one-off thing. I think uh, it, it was very fun, and hopefully we'll get more of this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before I fall off this cliff, we got a uh, new wave of stages, of Mario Kart stages, uh, that just came out yesterday. Uh, so they, they, the, it's wave four of stages. Came out yesterday. Yeah, that's it. I've, I've heard the stages are good. I haven't played them. We could play on them today. Depends on Tim. Tim's the one that uh, bought it. We could do a Mario Kart session. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Depends on how the subathon goes. Uh, but I'm down to do it, uh, honestly. We'll see. 
so far, so far, three hours left, hey, which it, is a lot. It is Mario Day today, so I'd like to do something Mario, but I did not plan for it. Uh, true. And we're going to end today's uh, news with a bit of uh, a sad confirmation. We had a rumor that Boruto was going to go on a permanent, on a indefinite hiatus. So the anime was going to stop being produced and we don't know when it's coming back. And now that is not a rumor anymore. It's been confirmed. The hiatus yeah. is real. But we they're branding it as the end of part one. It's the end of the part one of Bor We're going on hiatus, but instead we're just... Oh, it's the part one finale, guys. Get ready for part two. We don't know when part two is coming, but this is the end of part one. That, this is not... This is not... Mm, not hiatus. No, no, no. It's the end of part one. Well, let's not call it a hiatus, please. Don't. Part two of the anime is already in the works. We're, we're, we're coming back. We are... We're definitely coming back. You, you know, you know, this could be, this could go either way. It could, it could be them taking an I hate us and, and literally figuring stuff out. Cause I, it, it's been received with mixed feelings. Let's, let's say that. Uh, we're not the ones really to tell. We have our opinions about Porto. Let's be honest. We do have our opinions. <laughs> Uh, but there are people that really hate it. I don't hate it. I just don't yeah. like it. Uh, and there are people that still enjoy it uh, for what it is. And but it is mixed. It, it. I don't think Naruto was that ever like that. And that's why Naruto is so successful because people really loved it. Um, so maybe they're just trying to figure stuff out. Or maybe this was a planned thing all along. You know, it could be also a thing because we have we have the the time skip in, in Naruto. Uh, there's definitely a time skip in Borto because we've seen that time skip. We've seen the characters as adults or teenagers. Yeah. So maybe uh, we'll get that. The maybe. Man, I hear the manga is getting there. But this is getting pretty close to manga too. So I don't know, man. Boruto always had like a ton of filler from the very start. Like the thing everyone hated about Naruto, Boruto was doing from day one. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and... And it's like they didn't plan ahead. Like, the Boruto manga is monthly, I believe, and they're making weekly episodes. Of course the anime is going to catch up, right? Yeah. But their plan was just, we'll do filler. And, like, that was never a good plan. Uh, that, was now, never, that was never good. Now they're going on hi hiatus, and I see the, the copium in chat saying, well, they'll allow them to not do filler. No, it won't. Until they change this scheduling issue, it won't. They'll keep doing filler. If they're pulling Yay. out weekly episodes and they're doing monthly manga, that's not enough. A weekly manga with weekly episodes is not enough either. Like sometimes you need yeah. two chapters to make an episode, you know? Or otherwise it turns into one piece where it's like, okay, we have five minutes of narrative and 10 minutes of facial reactions. Just like cut to this reaction, to this, to this, to this. And it's like every episode has such a slow pacing because of that. Yeah, and, and then and then you also have the Naruto situation where uh, obviously you had those between, between Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, you had those... I know 200 fillers I don't know that was that was crazy but also in 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 the middle of each of the the the, the Shippuden series you, you the the arcs you add uh, a couple of fillers maybe to you know fill in the, the the gaps try to let the manga go a bit further and and I don't I think the only way you can go about this is actually go into a hiatus and leave let just let the manga go just let it go because if if you're gonna come back, if if the problem is the complaints, uh, I think that the the only way you can go about it is don't have any fillers, or if you have, it's just a you know a last case scenario. So just let the manga go, let the manga go as far as it can, let the manga maybe maybe even finish and come back with a proper anime because uh, it, it kind of that's what it deserves. I know. Boruto is not Naruto, but for what Naruto was, I think Boruto deserves to get at least the the, the least bit of chance. And if they keep doing fillers, it, it won't get that chance. 100% yeah. agree. But uh, on other news, the original anime, Naruto anime, is going to get four brand new episodes for the 20th anniversary. So kind of a, a celebration here where uh, the, the road of Naruto, uh, it, it's going to be like... Um, a four episode thing. I don't know. This is not safe to show. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be four episodes uh, for Naruto. Wait, so here's. It began, he, began streaming? And this is 20 he, years of Naruto, isn't it? 10 minutes in October. I thought there were going to be four new episodes. Official I, reveals. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 
here, here's what I'm thinking. I, I don't, I don't know if I understand this correctly, but I do think like they're gonna redraw some stuff uh, as part of the anniversary, and on top of redrawing some stuff, they're adding episodes they're doing more stuff to it mm. uh so they're redrawing and then uh adding more content that uh, was available back then i think that's what i got from this uh you know what man i <laughs> i was i i cried three times in this trailer no not like full-on crying but tears in my eyes right. three separate times just the, the this trailer and we can't play it but it just keeps playing different intros from naruto and every time a new intro comes and and it reminds me of Naruto. Yeah. <sighs> My god, man, it's amazing. It's amazing what how this anime makes me feel. It's 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 actually amazing. I I don't know what it is. I think I know for a fact it's good. But there's something about the the music, the 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 sounds, the story, the the voice acting. There's the mix of it all. It's just it, it makes me so emotional. Yeah. Um so this is cool. Yeah, to call this a trailer is also this is 10 minutes long this is not a trailer <laughs> but yeah the the road uh, of naruto video it's kind of like a big recap an emotional recap taking you through different eras of naruto right uh but yeah that that is to be very clear that is a, a separate thing from the four brand new episodes that will air in september to celebrate the 20th anniversary so you can watch this now uh and then get excited for the four brand new episodes uh we'll see what happens what that is all about uh it's probably another filler arc, right? But uh, we'll... Uh, original Naruto, it's been a while. So we'll see what yeah. happens. Uh, and who, Crazy. Which villain is he going to defeat with Rasengan this time around? Anyway, exactly. let's move on to Q&A. Uh, we're looking at chat. We're looking at no mic voice. And you guys feel free to ask any questions. But uh, that's also going to do it for this edition of Around the Bush on the VOD. So uh, we're going to keep the subathon going. But the VOD is going to end right here. So thanks for watching, guys, and catch you next week. Hopefully the subathon will be over. Hopefully I won't be here forever. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.